Don Getling and Gino Franti. Now for three years here, guiding you to personal financial wellness, thanks to the help of Cherry Creek Mortgage. Uh, you can reach out to us at 855-DON-GINO. You email us at donandgino at gmail.com. Or join us in the vault at donandgino.com. That's right. So if you have to jump out of the car and still want to listen to us, or you just want to listen to us during the day when you're at work, because it's from 12 to 2. Most of you don't have lunch times that long. If you do, let me know, and uh, I, w- I want to apply. Want to apply? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't get lunch here. We just rock and roll. Um, anyways, we're here with Chris Ingram with Infinity Wealth Management, and he's been sharing some great information about not just allocation, where you should put your funds, but also strategies. There's multiple strategies these days, and it is more complicated than ever. You know, As we get more te- technologically advanced and get more information and more knowledge, also comes confusion. And that's why you need true professionals more than ever. You think, well, I got all this information. Well, what do you do with it? You know, unfortunately, people make, uh, including myself, you make e- emotional decisions that may not be the right decisions. When you are informed and educated, it's really easy to make proper decisions. I know it's easy for us because this is what we do all day long. We do loans. We do home financing, refinances, new home loans, your next home. That's what we do, and we're really, really good at it. So actually making those decisions is pretty easy for us based on your goals. Chris, I'm sure it's the same for you. Knowing what the, their goals are, their time frames, their financial position, and so forth, it probably helps you guide them down the right path, I'd imagine. Yeah, I, I tell every client that I need to know that information up front before I can be good at what I do. Yep. Yeah, we, I'm we in the same boat. I got to tell you that uh, recently I've been spending a lot of time on time frames. How long will you be in this home? <laughs> it's so important in today's current mortgage market to know how long you're going to be in the home. There's a lot of products that will outperform a 30 year fixed over and over and over again when used properly and they might suit your needs. And if you save X amount of dollars over time and place them with you. Yeah, give them to Chris. Yeah, take that savings, place them with Chris. I mean, it's just long-term. It's just interest, too. It's not like, you You're know, burning it. You're yeah. just throwing it away and giving it to the bank. So, I mean, it's the most frustrating expense you could possibly have besides maybe insurance, which is another frustrating expense sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but but that's necessary. the thing is timeline is so important because you're not going to advise someone who's 28 years old the same as you're going to advise somebody who's 68 years old. Not at all. I mean, I get people all the time there. Um, you know, young and they've got a very long time horizon. They want to be ultra conservative. Or I get people that say, I have this money and I need it six months from now, but I really want to make a lot of money on it <laughs> in the next six months. So, yeah, people really need to think about their time horizon. It's super important. No doubt about it. All right, Chris. So we were talking about different strategies and you wrote a great article. We have a new magazine that's going to be coming out um, in May uh, from our APRG, which is our... Um, basically America's professional resource group, a group of the best professionals we can find in Santa Cruz, and we're putting out a magazine that's going to give you information and education and entertainment on a monthly basis that will, we hope will change your life. And Chris wrote a great article for our first magazine coming out about um, dollar cost averaging. I love it because you hear about dollar cost averaging. And stay tuned because you're going you're gonna to seem so knowledgeable after this. You go, I understand it now. And that's not always the way to go, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's even misconceptions about what it is, right? Because we just brought it up at the table and we start talking about it. And I had a misconception of what dollar cost averaging could be. So right. give us the actual definition of dollar cost averaging. Well, dollar cost averaging, I guess the actual definition is um, contributing a designated dollar amount at a predetermined interval. So um, $500 a a month every month would be dollar cost averaging into your portfolio. Okay, regardless of where the market is, that's the whole idea of the averages. The whole idea is, yeah, yeah, you're you're buying less when the market is high and you're buying more when the market is low. So it's, you know, it's averaging out and it's evening out the, the ups and downs of a volatile market environment. Um, and, and you're contributing on a regular basis. So let's talk about, um, let's say someone has a lump sum, and this is where the confusion I've seen, at least with dollar cost averaging, is going, well, do I put it all in now or do I spread it out over time? Mm-hmm. And that's the big picture. And it was kind of neat, this article you wrote and the, and the uh, research has been done on it. Um, start off with, I love the story about where d- why dollar cost averaging actually came to fruition for us and why it continued to... 
uh, stay with us, but now it's been actually researched and maybe it's not always the best option for him. Yeah, I mean, so dollar cost averaging, um, the concept of dollar cost averaging I actually came around in the 1940s. I have the exact date in my article, I can't remember, um, somewhere around the 1940s. And it came on the heels of the 1930s, which was a very volatile market environment. Um, and in a very volatile market environment, dollar cost averaging works really, really well because you are, you're, you're evening out the ride of that volatile market environment. You're buying less shares and when the market is up high, you're buying more shares when the market is down low, which buy low and sell high. I mean, we've heard that over right. and over again. Um, so the, that works out really well for a portfolio. Um, it would have worked out really well in the last, you know, decade plus that we've seen recently because it's been a very volatile market. No, environment. not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, those are two markets that it works really well in. Um, in a rising market environment, though. Um, like the last few years? Well, or you go back to, you know, what, 80s, 90s, you know, um, just long term, more linear rise, long term bull markets. Um, a study was done by Vanguard back in 2012, and they took 10 year rolling period. So, um, you know, every 10 years, every year rolling at a 10 year rate. Um, and they showed if we they took a million dollars or 20 million dollars and they invested it on day one versus spreading it out over the course of, of I think, a 12-month period, um, what was going to be the better result? And what they found is that um, in the majority of cases, investing the money all up front ended up being the better alternative than stretching the money out and averaging it into the market over a 12-month period. So this only really applies to somebody who has a lump sum amount. Um, doesn't really apply to somebody who's I'm gonna I only have two hundred dollars every month to contribute to my account. But if you had a lump sum to invest, versus um, you know uh, walking it in over a twelve month period, the Vanguard study showed that lump sum was the better alternative. So it just goes to show you out there that just what you read isn't always the best option for you. It's just it was trendy at the time. And again, I, I love, Chris, how you brought out that there's multiple strategies depending on their particular situation and not just allocation now. Like you said, initially, if you heard the last day what Chris was talking about, you know, you always hear about, well, put this much in bonds, put this much in stock, put this much in this, you know, allocated over different uh, uh, areas, basically. Um, now you're talking about ways to strategize on that investment, right? Right. Yeah, I was going to say this ties right into the last segment where this would be a strategy allocation if we wanted to allocate a small amount to dollar cost averaging. If we thought we were going into a volatile period, that might not be a bad idea, but you can move that percentage of how much of your portfolio you're putting in that strategy in or out depending on what marketplace you think you're in. Right. Excellent. Right. And it, and it goes back to something I say, I've, I've said probably every time I've been on this show and I say to pretty much every client and everybody that I come in contact with is it comes back to what is the best thing for you as an individual. Um, it's not going to be the same for you, Gino, as it is for me or it is for, you know, Shannon over here. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a different solution for everybody. So it's, it's a matter of sitting down and trying to figure out what do you what resources do we have to work with? Do we have a lump sum? Do we need to dollar cost average because all we have is five hundred dollars a month to contribute and really figuring out what is the solution that's going to work best for you? It's not going to be the same for everybody. So just saying lump sum is the right way to go or dollar cost averaging is the right way to go, I think is wrong. I think what the article shows is that um, it needs to be thought out. And you need to take the time to really figure out what the goal is and what's the best solution. Well, we for think you. you need to take the time to reach out to Chris Ingram. Chris, again, how can they get a hold of you? Uh, 661-255-9555, extension 16, that's 16. Or uh, my email address is cingram at nextfinancial.com. All right, Chris, thank you for uh, coming on the show. I wish we had another couple hours because based on this list of great information, so we'll just have to have you back on a regular basis still. <laughs> Look and forward more to more articles. Yeah. Well, thanks for uh, sharing this with us again. Chris Eager with Infinity Wealth Management. Um, do not go away. We have some great information and updated information about the hot market and the spring fling right here in Santa Cruz. You're going to want to stay tuned. Don't go away. <laughs>